present Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, proudly presenting Photoplay Magazine's Gold Medal Award screenplay, Columbia Pictures' The Jolson Story, starring Al Jolson and Evelyn Keyes with William Demarest and Ludwig Donut. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we present the screenplay you've all wanted so much to hear, that you, in fact, chose for this occasion. It's that great musical hit, The Jolson Story, selected by theatergoers as their favorite picture during 1947. In a nationwide poll by Dr. George Gallup's Audience Research Incorporated for Photoplay Magazine. Our stars are Al Jolson himself, for years billed as the world's greatest entertainer, and Evelyn Keyes, with William Demarest and Ludwig Donner. After tonight's performance, they, as well as the producer and director of the Jolson story, will receive Photoplay Magazine's coveted gold medal award for their work in bringing the picture to the screen. We're particularly happy to present the Jolson story, not only because of the award it's won, but because of your many friendly letters asking for it. And we're grateful, too, that so many of these letters spoke enthusiastically of Lux Soap. I'm sure from reading them that if we took a poll of lovely women everywhere, Lux Soap would win their personal citation as America's favorite beauty soap. On now to the first act of the Jolson story, starring Al Jolson as himself and Evelyn Keyes as Julie, with William Demarest as Steve and Ludwig Doneth as Cantor Jolson. Remember me? Steve Martin's the name. Used to have an act in vaudeville. Not good, maybe, but not bad. That summer, I was playing in Washington, D.C., and one matinee... <laughs> you like that joke, huh? That was pretty good, huh? All right, now how about some music now? I'll tell you what I'll do. You name a tune and I'll play it on my cello. The Banks of the Warbash! Yeah, yeah, Banks yeah, of the Warbash, all right. Now wait a minute, I'll play it if you folks will sing it. Okay, here we go, Banks of the Warbash. <laughs> So you won't sing, huh? Am I asking you to do me a favor? I'm doing you a favor. Now, come on, we'll try it again. From the fields there comes a breath of new morning. That's it, kid. You show them how to sing. Give that Do boy a spotlight. Come on, you're doing great. lights are gleaming. On the banks of the Wabash Far away Hey, hey, what's your name, Sonny? Asa Yolson Where'd you learn to sing like that? Well, I sing in my father's choir He's the canner at the synagogue Where? At the, the synagogue Holy smoke, I'm supposed to be there like that. After the show, I keep thinking about that kid. Then I get an idea. I could use him in my act. He'd be great. So before dinner, I stop over to Canner Olson's house. Sure, the Canner will let him sing all right, but... Uh... But where his people have always sung? In the synagogue, Mr. Martin. Well, if you're worried about my taking good care of him, why... Mr. You... Martin, I think I know what is best for my son. Yeah. I'm sorry, Asa. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. So, singing in the theater... Asa, you will never go to that place again. You promise me? I can't promise, Papa. I can't. Go to your room. A few weeks later, I'm back in Kenny Olson's home. Asa, it seems, had run away looking for me. They found him, but the kid said he'd only run away again. It was an awful tough decision for his folks to make. But they told Asa he could go with me. Go with me on the stage. A year later, the kid's performing like a veteran. But something happens. In the middle of the song, his voice breaks. He finishes the number whistling. 
But right after, in our dressing room... What's the use of talking, Steve? I can't sing anymore. I'm quitting. Ah, don't be silly, will you? Your voice is changing, that's all. And I like that whistling. And do you know something? I'm going to give you a billing. Steve! Yeah. Yes, sir, Steve Martin and Asa Olson. Steve Martin and... Asa Olson. That don't sound so good, does it? Well, I'll change it, Steve. I'll think up a new name. Hmm. Well, you go buy a, a, a box of birdseed, will you? If you're going to whistle, you're going to whistle good. Don't stop, Mama. What else does Asa write? Asa says, now I whistle in the act. Everybody seems to like it. <laughs> Your loving son, Papa. What's the matter? Asa isn't Asa anymore. Look. Look how he signs the letter. Al. Al Jolson, Mama. Yeah, our act is now Martin and Jolson. But Asia has changed in more ways than his name. A lot of time has gone by, and that kid in knee pants is growing up. We're playing in Louisville during Derby Week. We're in our dressing room when Tom Barron walks in. Tom does a singing routine in blackface. Only tonight, <laughs> he's had about six mint juleps too many. Hiya, boys. Guess what I did this afternoon? I picked the winner of the Kentucky Derby. Tom, you got to get yourself together. You're on in a little while. Oh, don't worry about me, no. I never missed the show yet. I'll... Steve, get him some black coffee. I'll see if I can straighten this guy out. It was no use. Baron was out cold. So what does Al do? He puts on Baron's costume, smears on blackface, and takes his place on the stage. Rosie, you are my posy. You are my heart's bouquet. Come out here in the moonlight. There's something sweet love. I want to say Your honey boy I'm waiting Those ruby lips to breathe Don't be so aggravating My blushing rosy My posy sweet There's a little bunch of sweetness that alone to call my bride And believe me, I'm not happy Lest my baby's by my side Her baptismal name is Rosie But she puts the rose to shame And most every night You'll hear me call her name Professor, I'm gonna sing about my baby Rosie You are my posy You are my heart bouquet Come out Here in the moonlight There's something sweet love I'm singing for my baby Your honey Your boy I'm waiting Those rubies Those lips to greet Don't be so aggravating my blush and rosy, my posy sweet. Al knows Baron's routine by heart, and he kills the people. As soon as the curtain comes down, we rush to Baron's dressing room to see how he's making out. Then we hear that knocking on the door. Steve, it's the stage manager. He'll murder me for taking Baron's place. Open up, Mr. Baron. Mr. Lou Dockstader is here to see you. Lou Dockstader, the king of the minstrels. You can go right here, Mr. Dockstader. Well, isn't anyone going to open the door? Uh, sure, Mr. Dockstader. Uh, Steve Martin's the name, uh, Mr. Dockstader. This is my partner, Al Jolson. How do you do? Now, about Tom Barron. Well, what's the matter with him? He, uh, he, he just collapsed, Mr. Dockstader. Poor fella. He, he, he should never have gone on tonight. Well, who's kidding who around here? I think we can drop the pretense. Huh? I know that wasn't Baron who sang. I've heard Baron before. You accustomed to singing in blackface, Joseph? Him? No, never, Mr. Dockstader. Well, if you have no objections to blackface, you can join Dockstader's minstrels next week in St. Louis. You don't mean it. 
No, you couldn't. I like your voice, Dolson. As for Baron, don't worry. I can keep a secret. Doc Stiddle's minstrel, Steve. Did you hear that? You and me, big time. I I have a place for one man only. Well, um, what did you think, Al? What would I be doing in a minstrel show? Yeah, me too. Besides, you, you want to sing, Mr. Doc Stiddle. Me, I, I, I'd rather whistle. Steve here, he keeps wanting me to sing. But at heart, I'm just a whistler. You see that? <laughs> only thing keeps me happy, Mr. Dockstader. Whistling, yes, sir. Only thing keeps me happy. Hey, uh, when are you leaving town, Mr. Dockstader? Tomorrow night. Uh, thanks. I got an idea. Oh, hello, Jolson. Mr. Dockstader. I thought you were going to St. Louis. I am. So are you. But this train doesn't go there. Oh, yes, it does. Where's Steve? He was here a minute ago. He's not coming, Al. Then, then I'm on the wrong train. Oh, Al, you're on the right train. Train Steve wants you to be on. No, no. Steve, where are you? Steve! After that, I lost track of Al for a couple of years. Later, I heard he left Doc Static. Al got all steamed up over a new type of music called jazz. He and Doc Static disagreed, and Al... As for his release. Then, one day in Washington... Asa! Asa! Papa, look, he's back. Mama. <laughs> oh, you look wonderful. Oh, you got younger, darling. Asa! Papa. Oh, gosh, I... I... Asa, how are you? Look at him, Papa. A man. Well, 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 well why are you so excited? Um, uh, what, 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 what is that to be excited about? Oh, such, such a beautiful boy. And now, look, skin and bones... Did you have dinner, Asa? Dinner? What's that? But sit down, Asa. Come, come on, darling. Make him sit down, Papa. Tell me, Papa. How's everything been, huh? Well, the same, Asa. The same. And you? Oh, me? I, I've been fine, Papa. Working? Yeah, in a way. And I've been pretty busy, too. I've been playing around with a new kind of music, Papa. It's great. It's different. At least I think it is, but... But what, Asa? I don't know, Papa. I've talked to people about it, and they think I'm crazy. You see, this music, well, I I happen to run across it down south. I've been trying to make songs out of it. It's the only kind of music I want to sing. This music is so peculiar. No, no, you sing it all the time, Papa. You want to sing prayers on the stage? Oh, no, Papa. Just the feeling in prayers. It's, it's in the music even when it's fast and happy. But, like I told you before, they think your son is a little crazy. Yes, I, I'll answer it, Papa. Hello? Yes? New York? Who? I? Oh, Asa. Oh, you hold the wire, please. Uh, Asa, Mr. Tom Barron. Tom Barron. Thanks, Mama. Hello? Al, how are you? Fine, Tom. How'd you know I was here? I got your address from a booking agency. Al, you know what I'm doing now? No. Manager of the new Winter Garden Theater. Manager of the Winter Garden? Tom, that's swell. We're opening a new show in four weeks. There's a spot for you, Al, if you're interested. Interested? Interested, he says... How, how soon would you want me? Well, right away. I'll get a train tonight. See you tomorrow, then. The minute Al. I get there. Gee, thanks, Tom. Well, Asa, you, you just came home. I'll be back, Papa. Oh, what a break this is. New York, Broadway, Winter Garden, here I come. They gave Al a five-minute spot in the last act. You'd think they had given him the world. He was that excited about it. Well... Opening night comes, and on stage they're doing the big ballet number. But it's midnight and the show's running way too slow. The audience is getting restless and so are the critics. So the boss backstage decides to make a cut. I know, I know. Sorry, Jolson, but we're cutting your number. Mike, tell the stage hands to set the scenery for the finale. Look, please, I gotta go on. And tell the orchestra leader, tell Oscar we're cutting the Jolson song. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. You're not gonna do this to me. I'm going on. That's what you think. Finale, everybody. Take your places for the finale. Hey, you, Jolson, come back here. Look, look, he's going on the stage. I'll teach him who's running this show. Curtain, close that curtain on him. <laughs> well, well, here I am, folks. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong. I, I always jump through the curtain like this. Oh, <laughs> you lucky people, you. Now, what are you so surprised about, Oscar? Look at him, folks. That's Oscar, our leader. Oscar, look, don't just stare at me. I know I'm beautiful. <laughs> But we got a song to do. Hey, Al, get off the stage. Your number's been cut. Tell the boys, Oscar, we'll take this number nice and slow. Now, just settle back, folks. Yes, I'll settle back. 
because you ain't heard nothing yet. Mammy, Mammy, the sun shines east, the sun shines west. I know where the sun shines best. Mammy, my little mammy, my heart strings are tangled around Alabama. I, I'm a coming. Sorry that I made you wait. I'm a coming. Hope and trust that I'm not late. Uh-huh. Mammy, my little mammy, I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles, my mammy, oh, mammy, my little mammy, the sun shines east, the sun shines west, I know where, I know where the sun shines best, it's it's on my mammy I'm talking about. Nobody else is. My little mammy. My heart strings are tangled around. Alabama. Mammy. Mammy, I'm coming. Oh, I hope. I hope I didn't make you wait. Mammy. Mammy, I'm coming. Oh, Lord. I, I hope I'm not late. Mammy. Look at me. Don't you know me? I'm your little baby. I walk a million miles for one of your smiles. My ma, ma, me. In just a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of the Jolson story. Meanwhile, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. I heard the other day you liked mystery thrillers, Mr. Keeley. Well, I have just the picture for you. I suspect then, Libby, that it's the new metro golden Mayor picture, High Wall. Mm-hmm. That is a thriller. And isn't Robert Taylor wonderful? He is indeed. In the role of a suspected killer, he proves what a versatile actor he is. With Audrey Totter as the feminine lead... I'm sure Bob found the romantic angle of the story most interesting, too. And Herbert Marshall is the sinister character who holds the key to the mystery. I always enjoy his work. But coming back to Audrey Totter... One of your favorites, Mr. Keeley? Well, I certainly thought she was splendid. In this, her most important role to date. Yes, indeed. She proves herself a fine dramatic actress in MGM's High Wall. What animation and charm she has. I think John Kennedy will agree that Audrey Totter is delightful to look at, too. Mm, I'll say she is with her red gold hair and that wonderful Lux complexion. <laughs> you can say that again, Mr. Kennedy. Audrey's skin is just as fresh as a baby's, and she finds Lux toilet soap a wonderful help in keeping it that way. Lux soap is made to protect million dollar complexions, Libby. Screen stars find this fragrant white soap really makes skin lovelier. And skin specialists have proved it. In recent tests, three out of four complexions became softer, smoother in a short time. If you haven't tried it, why not begin your beauty facials with Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow? Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act two of the Jolson story, winner of Photoplay Magazine's Gold Medal Award, starring Al Jolson in the title role and Evelyn Keyes as Julie, with William Demarest as Steve Martin and Ludwig Donath as Cantor Jolson. <laughs> Tootsie, goodbye. Tootsie, don't cry. Overnight, Al Jolson became the sensation of Broadway. Behind that personality, that way of singing a song, was Al's overwhelming desire to entertain people. Give him an audience and he'd sing as long as the people remained in the theater. For the mail, I'll never fail. If you don't get a letter, then you'll know I'm in jail. Don't cry, Tootsie, don't cry. By now, Al had sent for me. He said he needed a manager. <laughs> I've always wondered if he needed a manager half as much as I needed a job. Al's next show in the Winter Garden was Honeymoon Express. Opening night, like most musicals, 
It's running way too long. Al's on stage in blackface, playing a comedy dramatic scene with the ingenue. Well, 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 what's the matter, Miss Sally? Things just can't be as bad as all that. Oh, don't you see, Uncle Gus? Henry will never believe I love him and not Lester. Well, uh, why don't you just explain it to Henry? Explain it to him. He won't listen to me. Well, honey, look. Henry better listen pretty soon or this show is going to run till one o'clock. <laughs> you know, a lot of these folks live in Brooklyn. <laughs> well, it's like this, folks. Sally here, well, Henry really loves Sally, and she loves him. And it all works out fine. Believe me, folks, you can go home. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> so here's where we stand. You see, it's after 12 o'clock. Like I told you how the show ends. So why don't you all get out of here? That's it. Get right. <laughs> all right. All right. If you want to stay, I feel pretty good tonight. And I got another dozen songs in me. And I'm raring to go. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll sing. But if I'm going to sing, I want to see you. Turn up the hot slide, Joe. Yes, sir. That's it. All right, Professor, you made me love you. And if that ain't a music cue, I never heard one. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me want to. And all the time you knew it. I guess you always knew it. You made me happy sometime You made me sad But there were times, baby <laughs> You dog Oh, you made me cry for I didn't want to tell you I didn't want to tell you I want some love That's true You know I do Deed I do Yes I do Gimme, 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 gimme What I cry for You know you got the kind of kisses That I die for You know you made me Love you After Honeymoon Express Came Robinson Crusoe Fourteen months later We were still selling out At every performance Look, Mama, see what variety says. Jolson's still Sacco biz in Winter Garden. Sacco biz, Papa? Mama, when will you learn about show business? Oh, is something good, Sacco biz? Sacco biz is better than terrific. And Sakaru. Yes? Well, that, that's double Sacco, Mama. Oh. Sacco biz and double Sacco. That wasn't enough for Al. That's right, Steve. I'm going to do a show every Sunday night. So actors and people in show business will have a chance to come. Al, you're doing eight performances a week as it is. Oh, I know you'd rather sing than eat. But how about having some other kind of fun like, well, uh, you know, like a family? I've got a family, Steve. I see Mom and Papa every few weeks. I'm talking about a girl. I hate to disillusion you, but uh, there are fellas even in show business who like girls just as much as applause. <laughs> okay, Steve. Find me a girl, and I'll take her out sometime. Now, do me a favor. Call up that Mr. Glenn, Steve. You know, the moving picture guy. Tell him I'll be glad to see him tomorrow. But, Al, moving pictures, what do you want with those Now, wait things? a minute. This is different. These are moving pictures that talk. People don't talk enough as it is, huh? Okay, I'll call them. Experimenting with talking pictures for years, Mr. Jolson. We know it'll work, but we want a star in our first sound picture. Yeah, but suppose this picture flops. With Jolson, we don't think it will. How many people do you figure see a good movie, Mr. Glenn? Fifty million in this country alone. Never was an audience like that in history, Steve. Al, will you listen to me? Tell you what, Mr. Glenn, I'll give you my answer tomorrow. <laughs> On our last Sunday in New York, Al, as usual, gave a special performance for show people. That was the first announcement he made of the first talking picture, The Jazz Singer. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. And just like I told you, I'm going to Hollywood. I don't know what's going to happen to me out there, but I may want to come back. And when I do, you'll let me, won't you? you 
Thanks, I'll remember that. Well, I see a rival producer sitting down front. The famous Mr. Flo Ziegfeld. Oh, thank you. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Not too much applause, folks. <laughs> hey, Ziggy, Ziggy, who's that pretty gal with you? This is Julie Benson, the star of my next production, Showgirl. Mr. Ziegfeld, you will please not advertise on my time. <laughs> Glad to know you, Miss Benson. Look, I, uh, I'm giving a little farewell party at my place tonight, and I, well, as a rule, I, I don't do this sort of thing, you know. But honestly, I wish you'd drop over. No, you don't have to come alone if you don't want to. You can bring Mrs. Igfield with you. Well, look, think about it anyway, won't you? Well, folks, what would you like to have me say? Come on, tell me. Come on, tell me. What? What would you like? Well, April showers, eh? April showers. Isn't that what you said, Miss Benson, you'd like to hear? That's what I'd like to hear. April showers. Well, Professor, don't keep the lady waiting. Union, come on, play. <laughs> Though April showers, just for you, baby, just for you, they come your way. They bring the flowers that bloom in May. So if it's raining, have no regrets. Because it is raining, rain, you know. It's raining violets. And where you see clouds upon the hill, you soon will see crowds. Of a daffodils So keep on looking For a bluebird And listening for its song Whenever April showers Come along The April showers May come your way They bring the flowers That bloom in May and if it's raining, if it's raining, have no regrets because, look, it isn't raining. Rain, you know, it's raining violets. And where you see clouds, where you see clouds on the hills, look, look, they're not clouds, no, no, they're clouds of daffodils. So keep on looking for a bluebird. And listening for its song. Whenever April a shower comes, Allah. party uh, Al gave that night, but as soon as he could, Al slipped out to the terrace. He had finally found Julie Benson alone. You know, Miss Benson, you get prettier every time I see you. Well, the first time was just a few hours ago. Yeah. Well, then, you got prettier since then. Thank you. Look, will you do me a big favor? What? Will you marry me, Miss Benson? I'll do you a bigger favor, Mr. Jolson. I won't marry you. <laughs> I didn't suppose you would. Of course, I I shouldn't be rushing like this. Well, you think I'm kidding. But tonight, tonight when I looked across the footlights and I saw you, well, look. I got a great idea. Suppose you and me get married and go to California together, huh? Well, of course, I'm opening in a new show in two weeks. Yeah. It, uh, if it wasn't just for that, huh? Mm -hmm. And a few other things. Tell me. I want to know. Well, for example... That street down there. Oh, Broadway. You know something, baby? If you want it, I'll give it to you. No, I, I don't think it could ever be mine. And I'm not so sure I even want it. What is it you want? Come on, I gotta know. Well, in the first place, a real home. A, a place so far out in the country that by the time you got there and closed the door, you'd have forgotten all about show business. I know just the spot. It's up in uh, a... Mr. Jolson, it's getting pretty late. You have guests in there. But, I... baby, wait a minute. We're just getting places. And look, why don't you just call me by my southern name, Honey? 
You know the trouble, Julie? You just don't believe me. Oh, I do believe you, honey. But I always thought I'd like to fall in love with the man I was going to marry. Oh, you're absolutely right. And I'm not going to rush you. In fact, we won't even get married until I get back from California. How is that? <laughs> Al, you're crazy. <laughs> sure, baby. People in love always are. Anyway, we went to California and started work on the jazz singer. But every day, Al had telephoned Julie Benson in New York. Julie, Julie's worried, Steve. She, she's scared to death. Her show opens tomorrow night and she's afraid she won't make good. But, Al, what can you do about well, it? Tonight, I can be there. Steve, go ahead. Get me a special plane. But, Al, you're making a picture. Well, I just want to be there, Steve. Go on. Get me that plane. So we go to New York and we rush to Julie's Theater. <laughs> this is Julie's big chance, all right. But when she makes her entrance, even I can see how scared she is. I had told Al there was nothing he could do. Well, I was wrong. As soon as he catches Julie's hesitation, her nervousness, he jumps up right among that first night audience and picks up the tune of Julie's dance. Liza, Liza, skies are gray. But when you smile on me, all the clouds will roll away. Liza, Liza, don't any delay. Come keep me company and the clouds will roll away. See, the honeymoon is shining down. I just made a date with Parson Brown. Liza, Liza, name of the day. When you belong to me, all the clouds will roll away. The next day, Al Jolson and Julie Benson were married. No time for a real honeymoon. Just a dash to Washington to see Al's mother and father. But, hey, sir, I don't understand. You must run away to California and Julie to New York. Oh, it'll take me a couple of months to finish his picture, Mama, and then I'll be home. And that's where he's going to stay. Julie, there's only one thing the matter with Asa. He's got a thing. It's a wonderful thing. But a home with love in it is even more wonderful. Uh, Julie agrees with you, Papa. So we're going to build a real home and settle down, way out in the country with the crickets. <laughs> hey, sir, you mean this? Oh, even Julie doesn't know it yet. But I got an architect at work right now. Oh. I told him, build a house for Julie. The sky's the limit. Oh, that I approve of. And I also approve of Julie. Oh, thank you, Papa. Oh, Al, I'm so happy. A few months later, we're all together again in New York. The premiere of the jazz singer. Al didn't come with us, but nobody went to bed that night. We all stayed up waiting for the reviews in the early morning papers. It was about dawn when Al came in. Hello, everybody. Al. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Hey, sir, did you see these newspapers? Sensational. Yeah, they, they, they're really something. Julie, I, I wanted to celebrate tonight, but, well, we, uh, we got to talking things I over. I know. They want you to make another picture. How'd you know? That wasn't so hard to figure out. Well, I think they're right. But, Julie, we'd be separated again. You can't leave the show in the middle of a run. No. So that home in the country will just have to wait a little while longer. Julie, baby. I know it's another bad break, but it won't be for long. Then you'll get everything you want. While I'm gone, you go right ahead with the house, see? Start building it. Start teaching those crickets and frogs how to sing Mammy. Sure, Al. And it's all right, darling. I can wait. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of the Jolson story. When a girl's picture appears on the cover of one national magazine after another, the talent scouts take notice. They spotted ability as well as rare good looks in the case of Miss Terry Moore, young Columbia starlet. How is your latest picture assignment going, Terry? Fine. Picture making is hard work, Mr. Keeley, but there's a thrill in it, especially when I can watch a star like Susan Peters before the camera. 
She's really inspiring. It's an inspiration to all of us to see Susan Peters return to the screen after her serious accident. I think her fine performance in Columbia's new picture, The Sign of the Ram, will make movie history, Mr. Keeley. A very dramatic picture. Alexander Knox is excellent as the co-star. Did you get a chance to meet Susan Peters, Terry? Oh, indeed, yes, Mr. Keeley. Isn't she lovely to look at, though? One of the most beautiful girls in Hollywood. With a complexion that uh, will I let our friend John Kennedy here describe. Why, uh, everyone knows Susan Peters' exquisite complexion is a luxe complexion. Well, even the makeup man at the studio commented on her lovely skin, Mr. Kennedy. It has a wonderful, luminous look. You'll notice it when you see her close-ups in A Sign of the Ram. Susan Peters is one of the nine out of ten famous stars who know how effectively gentle Lux toilet soap cares for delicate skin. She depends on her daily Lux soap beauty facials, Mr. Kennedy. She told me so herself. The finest proof you could have that fragrant white Lux toilet soap is a complexion care that works. Any girl who uses Lux toilet soap faithfully should find it does wonders for the skin. I know I wouldn't skip my Lux soap facials a single day. Thanks, Miss Terry Moore, for that very practical beauty tip. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of Photoplay Magazine's gold medal award screenplay, The Jolson Story, starring Al Jolson in the title role and Evelyn Keyes as Julie, with William Demarest as Steve Martin and Ludwig Donath as Cantor Jolson. Al went back to California and Julie stayed in New York, but it wasn't long before Al persuaded her to leave her show and come to the coast. Al had made great plans for Julie. Where's the contract, Steve? Uh, here it is, Al. Oh, wait a minute. See, Julie, the same studio I work for. I've been working on this deal for weeks, honey. Hmm, now, Al, maybe she doesn't want to make a picture. What's he talking about, honey? Having the faintest idea. Uh, but, Al, please, just one picture. You're the boss, honey. One picture, just one picture. Al wanted Julie to make a picture, so Julie made a picture. And then the second one. But you gotta do it, baby. You were so wonderful in the first one. Now prove to him that it wasn't a fluke. And after the second picture came a third. But this is different, Julie. They want us to make this one together. You and me, honey. That's something I always wanted more than anything else. Oh, it's no use, Steve. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to get off this merry-go-round. When I finish a picture, Al's in the middle of one and vice versa. Oh, oh well, I don't mind. Look, Julie... It's just a matter of putting your foot down once. Mm, you'll know the right time to quit, Steve. He's happy. So am I. But thanks for thinking of me, my friend. Well, they previewed the picture that Al and Julie made together. And Al, as usual, he invited a big crowd to come over to the house afterwards. I don't get it, Julie. Where is everybody? Steve. Who cares? They forgot to show up. I uh, told the butler to send them away, Al, to tell everybody we went straight to, to Santa Barbara after the preview. <laughs> you know something? I'm glad. Well, you see, Al, tonight's our big night. We're free. Not a contract in the world. You know, honey, you sound like a gal with a proposition. Yes. We're going east, Al. A vacation. And after that, well, there's that little matter of building our house. Sounds wonderful, baby. All right, we'll leave for New York on Sunday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the rush? A week or so will wrap up everything fine for me. Oh, what's there to wrap up? Oh, just an idea, baby. Just an idea. That's all about uh, putting a company together and making our own pictures. Oh, darling, please. I, well, I know this is silly, but well, it's it's gotten to be sort of a principle with me. Once we do say we're going to quit for a while. Well, wait a minute. Who said we weren't? Oh, Al, I've waited so. Well, long. all I'm talking about is a couple of days, Julia. But when you want to spend it that way, Al, that's where the principle is. If you can't see that, I, I wouldn't know how to. Oh, holy smoke! Kids it's the first time I ever saw Julie cry. Something wrong with me, I guess, huh? Yeah, has been for a long time. Can, uh, can I come in, Julie? Of course. I'm sorry, Al. Crying. That's not fair, is it? Julie. Al, I... I'm like somebody with one desperate plan left. I couldn't go on this way if I wanted to. And the way we feel about each other, rather than let that die a slow, painful death, I, I think we ought to have the courage to quit now. That's one thing that can't happen, Julie. Be honest, Al. I was never more honest in my life. Just the thought of losing you, Julie. Oh, no, baby, no. I, 
I don't want any part of any contracts or shows or anything. Well, you I... can't make me a gift of your whole life. I just couldn't take it. Well, I, I got to quit, Julie. Just tapering off will never work, honey. I, I, I know myself. I just make more promises and break them and keep breaking them. Only, you got to help me, Julie. If I start yelling, hit me over the head, tie me down. Because when, when you go, baby, I ain't got nothing left. Oh, oh. Oh. Julie had one, and they went east. And when they returned to California, they built that house in the country and retired. Al was through, finished, and he meant it. Uh, what's that you're reading, Steve? Writing? Yeah. Oh, say, it says your last picture is now playing in New Zealand. Funny. Still hearing from places like that all this time. Say, did, did Julie mention where she was going? Mm, in the town, I guess. Why didn't she tell me I could have gone along for the ride? Say, Al, uh, your folks' wedding anniversary is tomorrow. You'll call them, huh? Yeah, but we should have brought him out here. Would have been nice, you know. Al, that uh, manuscript of Tom Barron's new show, uh, do you want to change your mind and read it? I've told him 50 times I'm not interested in doing any shows. All he wanted was well, your I, opinion I of it. I haven't got the patience lately. I don't know what's the matter with me. There she is. Surprise. Surprise. Mama, Papa. Hi, Oh, what a surprise. Who, who, who thought of this? Steve. Julie. Mama. Mama. Well, look, look, he's going to cry. Oh, go away. Oh, a big boy like him. <laughs> ah, this is the life, Mama. Mm -hmm. California. You know, if I tried, I, I could get used to this. Well, you, you go right ahead and try, Papa. I beg your pardon, Mr. Jolson. Mr. Barron is up at all. Hey, where is everybody? Tom! Hello, Julie. And Steve! Where'd you drop from, Tom? New York. Hello, <laughs> Al. How are you, Tom? You know my mother and father. Why, I should say, sir. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Jolson. Hello, Barron. Tom. How are you? Say, I had no idea I'd find the whole family here. You lost no time in finding me. You shouldn't have come, Tom. You've wasted a trip. Al! I'm not interested in your show. And busting out here like this will get you nothing. Al, what's the matter with you? I came to Hollywood to sign up some actors. I... I couldn't imagine coming here, Alan, not saying hello to you. Tom, I'm sorry. I don't know what got into me. Look, how long are you staying, pal? I'm flying back late tomorrow night. Well, then, till tomorrow night, you're staying here with us. And tomorrow, you'll attend the wedding anniversary dinner of Cantor and Mrs. Yolson. Well, that I wouldn't miss for anything. And look, son, I'm going to read that little show of yours right away. Yes, sir. Henry, we're ready for lunch. And, uh, no pork chops today. <laughs> a beautiful dinner table, Julie. Papa, imagine dinner outdoors. Mm, and even a full moon, Mama. Oh, leave it to Asa. Oh, Asa, and where is Asa, Julie? He and Tom, they're, they're still in the study working over that script. Uh, Papa, do you think these past couple of years have been good for Al? I mean, does he seem happy to you? Well, of course. Just like he used to be? Well, a, li a little more settled, maybe. Dinner is ready, Mrs. Jones. Yes, hey, excuse me, I'll get Al and Tom. <laughs> tell me, tell me, Mr. Barron, is this new show of yours, it, it will be Socceroo, yes? <laughs> well, I sure hope so, Mrs. Jolson. You know, if I ever had any idea of going back to that old grind, that's the kind of a show I'd want. Not that I have any such ideas. Good. No, I, I couldn't stand it. What do you mean, Al? Well, I mean, I've been laying off too long. No, I'm all through with all that. Here's a toast to you, Tom. Good luck with your new show. Yes. Well, yes, thank you, everybody. <laughs> now, I have a toast. To Cantor and Mrs. Olson. A hundred more years of happiness. Oh, <laughs> speech. Oh, Come on, Cantor. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. That, that, that was very kind. In fact... Oh, oh, that wine, Mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very good wine, Mama. I, I remember Mama and I on, on the night of our wedding. Oh, how we danced that wedding night. <laughs> Asa, Asa, you should have seen us. Oh, oh, I remember. You couldn't be there. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I thank you all. I thank you. Uh, that was good, Papa. Very good, very good. Remember that, Asa? I heard you sing it, Papa, a thousand times. Mm, that was the waltz at our wedding. 
Come on, Asa, sing with me. No, you go ahead, Papa. Uh huh. Look at, Mama, Mama. Hmm. Tell me the truth. Who was always a better singer, me or Asa? <laughs> you, of course, Papa. Uh huh. You hear that? Come on, Asa. Come on. Please sing with me. Oh, how we danced on the night we were wed. We vowed our true love, though a word wasn't said. The world was in bloom. There were stars in the skies, except. For the few, Mama, come, let's dance. In your eyes, dear, as I held you close in my arms, angels were singing a hymn to your charms, to hearts gently beating, murmuring low, my darling, I love you so. The night seemed to fade into blossoming dawn. The sun shone anew, but the dance lingered on. Could we but relive that sweet moment sublime? We'd find that our love is unaltered by time. Well, that's that. Thank you, Asa. Look, uh... Uh, suppose we drive into town and you all be my guests at a nightclub. What do you say? Nightclub now? Oh, sure. I can still make my plane. Couldn't we just stay here, Tom? You see, we haven't been in a nightclub for years. Julie and I, well, we're just plain country folks. Anyway, Mom and Papa, well, they wouldn't be much interested in nightclub, would you, Mama? Yes, oh, yes. Well, of course they yes. would. <laughs> all right, come on, folks. Let's go. Such a place. In all your years in show business, you didn't see anything like it. No, no, Mama. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to interrupt the show to make an announcement. We have a celebrity with us, a man you enjoyed and admired for many years. He's been away from show business a long time, and we've missed him a lot. But he's still the greatest entertainer of them all. I wonder who he means. The one and only Al Joseph. And folks, folks, there's a chance in a thousand if we ask him hard enough, just for old time's sake, Mr. Jolson might give us a song. Oh, this guy's crazy. No, no, I can't. What do you say, Al? I'm sorry. No, no. The crowd won't take no, Al. Go ahead. Julie. Of course, darling. I, I'd get out of it if I could, baby. I'm sorry. Here he comes, folks. Al Jolson. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie, and thank you, folks. It's, it's nice to be remembered. But, oh, about singing for you. See, I'm a little rusty. But, well, Charlie, what do the boys play that I can sing? Anything, Al. Well, how about Swanee, folks, okay? I've been away from you a long time. I never thought I'd miss you so. Somehow I feel your love is real. Near you I want to be. The birds are singing, it is song time. The banjo strumming soft and low. I know that you yearn for me too. Swanee, you're calling me. Swanee, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swanee. I'd give the world to be among the folks here. E-I-X, I even know my mammy waiting for me, praying for me down by the Swanee. The folks up north won't see me no more when I get to that Swanee shop. I love the old folks at home. Ah, Swanee, how I love you, how I love you, my 
dear old Swanee. The folks up north won't see me no more when I get to that Swanee shore. All right, just one more, just one more, but on one condition, folks. Tell everybody in the floor show to come out and sit down. That's it, kids. Come on, come on out, all of you. You worked hard tonight, you must be tired, so sit down, and I'll take over. Just one number, huh? Yes, sir. Just gather around and make yourself comfortable. Folks, you ain't heard nothing yet. You see, Papa, what Al didn't have at home was an audience. Live faces. Isn't that it, Steve? Julie, No. I was so sure he didn't want to sing anymore. He wanted to be with me. All right. All I right, let him make the wrong decision. You heard him. All right. They want April showers. April showers, boys. No April showers may come your way. They bring the flowers that bloom in May. Julie, and Julie, wait. Where are you going? I'm going home, Steve. I'll be gone by the time he gets no back. Oh, don't do it, Julie. He tried awfully hard, Steve. Because but you and I know Al just can't quit. Julie. See that he's on that plane tonight with Tom. They'll do a great show. This'll kill him, Julie. No, Steve. Look at him. When did you last see him as happy as that? And Steve, when he gets home nights, after the show, don't let him sing too long. So keep on looking for a bluebird and listening for its song. Whenever April showers come along. Our thanks to Al Jolson, Evelyn Keyes, William Demarest, and Ludwig Donath, who returned to the footlights in response to your applause. And after tonight's performance, it's easy for all of us to understand why the Jolson story was voted America's favorite photo play for 1947. Well, thanks, Bill. And believe me, we're mighty grateful to the moviegoers of America for their selection. You know, Bill, while you're passing around compliments, don't forget Harry Cohn, the head of Columbia Pictures, or little Sid Scalsey, who produced the Jolson story, and Sidney Buckman, who was such a great help on it. Yes, they certainly deserve those medals. What are the names of the winning stars on the Gallup's poll, Bill? Well, the individual stars are too many to mention here. But of course you'll find them in Photoplay Magazine's March issue on the stands now. And every one of them will receive a gold medal award at tonight's dinner at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And Bill, I'm going to give my medal to a boy who couldn't be here today, and he certainly deserves it. I'm going to give that medal... To Larry Parks. I'll break his arm if he takes it. Listen, uh... <laughs> I... <laughs> no, but I'm really going to give it to him. I understand, Bill, that, that Jack Ben is going to be master of ceremonies at dinner, huh? That's right. Jack and his magic violin. Say, uh... Hey, just a minute. Shouldn't Lux Soap get some sort of an award, Bill, for bringing the Jolson story to the air? Well, I'd rather it got an award for, let's say, uh, Evelyn's lovely complexion. I would too, Bill. Lux Soap is a wonderful complexion care. It certainly deserves some sort of medal. What's coming up on Lux next Monday night, Bill? Lux? Next Monday, we present a screenplay hailed by the reviewers as dynamic, smashing entertainment. It's Eagle Lion's current screen hit, T-Men, starring in his original screen role, Dennis O'Keefe. Co-starred with Dennis as the lovely Gail Patrick in a thrilling real-life drama of treasury agents tracking down one of the most dangerous counterfeiting rings in history. Bill, I'm going to sit up till 7 o'clock. I'm not going to bed till 8 that night. <laughs> An exciting picture, Bill, if I ever heard of one. Your audience really ought to love it. And may I say good night for everybody? Good night. <laughs> and congratulations on tonight's award.
you aren't missing your chance to win one of the grand prizes in Lieber Brothers' $100,000 fur contest. Only three more weeks to enter. The third contest closes next Sunday night, February 22nd. $20,000 worth of furs and cash given away every week. The first prize is a gorgeous mink coat worth $3,000. There are three second prizes, luxurious fur coats worth $1,000 each. And fur jackets, fur scarves, 250 cash prizes, 329 prizes in all every week. You select your own fur in any style you wish, or you can take your prize in cash. Now, ladies, here's all you do. On entry blank available at your dealer, or on any piece of paper, write 25 words or less telling why you like any one of the six famous Lever products. Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes, Life Boy, Rinso, Swan, or Spry. Send as many entries as you wish each week, but be sure to include a wrapper or box top from one of these Lever products for every entry you make. Print your name and address and the name and address of the dealer from whom you buy your Lever products. Mail your letter, together with box top or wrapper, to Lever, L-E-V-E-R, Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York 8, New York. If your entry comes in later than February 22nd, it will be entered in the following week's contest. To enter, you must live in the continental United States, Hawaii, or Alaska. These contests are subject to all federal, state, and local regulations and to contest rules printed on official entry blanks. Your dealer will give you these entry blanks. Winners of the four top prizes for the first week's contest will be announced on this program next week. Al Jolson can be heard on his own program for the Kraft Cheese Company. Evelyn Keyes will next appear in the Columbia picture, The Mating of Millie, co-starring Glenn Ford. William Demarest will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, The Sainted Sister. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Join us again next Monday night to hear T-Men with Dennis O'Keefe and Gail Patrick. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsodent toothpaste with the brands they'd been using at home. 